Good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to NPC Ngonyana Precast uh, Limited webinar for the bond uh, introduction to the market. So I hope I'm audible and I hope we have all been looking forward to the webinar. So before we start, uh, I will just allow a video to play that will basically introduce us to Wanyani Precast, who they are, what they do. Then we will take it from there as the others join. Welcome everyone and good evening. Good evening, thank you.
Thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, good evening and we apologize for the audio. Uh, we are getting feedback that the audio was actually not working. We apologize, we sincerely apologize. It's quite an interesting video, which I wish everyone could have watched. So it was just a basic introduction of the company and everything about what they do, as well as, uh, sorry, we're having a slight problem. Otherwise, good evening, everyone. So I think we can start uh, considering that a number of us have joined here. We're already here. So the first item on our agenda will be an introduction to what actually brings us here. So today we are here to unlock value for the company once again. Um, a lot of you might remember that we were, we had met before on the same platforms, which is webinars. So even today we are having the same opportunity, but under a different uh, category of investment. So Ngojeni Precast uh, got listed uh, last year, officially listed on the stock exchange on the 9th of November, and shares were sold to the general public through the stock exchange. And I'm sure most of you who are here had subscribed to that issuance. So currently, we are bringing another opportunity uh, which is a bond. So previously it was equity. Now we are on bond. So the bond was approved sometime last year, and now we have a, an auction date of the 5th of April. So just in brief uh, summary, a bond is a fixed income security. It's just an interest-bearing financial instrument whereby the investor receives their returns in form of uh, coupons, which is the interest payments, uh, which in this case are done semi-annually. So I think uh, everyone who's here has seen the documents that were shared, the pricing supplements and everything. But before I further elaborate on everything, I will just uh, hand over to Mr. Franz, whom I think has joined us on the webinar. So Mr. Franz will be taking us through a brief uh, presentation about the company, telling us about uh, his position. So he's the chairman of Ngonyene Precast and most of you have met him in the previous webinars. So I'll just hand over to Mr. Franz Pinar, who will uh, then lead us to the overall presentation of the company by Ms. Marisa. Thank you. Um, thank you, Antando, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> in short, um, just a, a brief overview, you know, uh, Marissa, the managing director of the company will take us uh, through a presentation about the organization. But I can say this, that, um, you know, 18 months ago, the company uh, was struggling uh, post COVID and uh, post um, the political unrest um, in um, Eswatini. And uh, due to cash flow constraints, uh, that was a consequence of um, um, of COVID and uh, also um, the political unrest, um, it, the whole market was under duress. You know, none of our customers had cash. Um, the hardware stores didn't carry any stock anymore, and it was creating uh, significant pressure um, on us as a business. Um, and, you know, in this situation like that, you can go and sit in the corner and feel sorry for yourself and sit and cry, or you can uh, do what this team did and come up with a plan. And uh, Marissa and, and her team, you know, it took the business apart and looked at each uh, division and each section and um, analyzed what can we do better? What can they do in a way that uh, if cash was not an issue, how would they be able to grow this business, be proactive in the market and, and achieve things? And this is really the story that we want to tell today. Uh, so obviously, last year uh, we raised some capital um, 
in an equity uh, uh, independent public offering uh, of equity listing on the stock exchange. And this is a further opportunity for fixed income instrument for investors that that would prefer that. Um, and, um, you know, our story is really an exciting one. The, the value addition because of the additional capital entering the company. Uh, uh, we will uh, we are in the process of disrupting the market and changing the way that um, these type of businesses do business. I'm exceptionally proud of the team of what they do and uh, you know, what they are, are achieving through this. Um, in, in short, you know, we're a, a, a Swazi company, now a public company, um, and our board of directors. Um, and Tandu, I know that you, uh, you had a little bit of information on that. Currently, our board uh, consists of... That's not the board yet. So it's um, currently our board uh, consists of uh, myself as chairman, uh, non-executive uh, chairman, uh, Marissa van Zaydam Kunene. She is the only executive director on the board. She's the managing director of the organization. Portia Dlamini, uh, that uh, previously uh, she won in 2012, she won Business Woman of the Year in Eswatini. She's held uh, several significant uh, positions in the financial field, the uh, chief financial officer of large organizations. Um, and she also chairs uh, our uh, finance and audit committee, risk finance and audit committee on the board, also a non-executive director. Um, and then uh, Nelsiwe Matabella uh, is a, a non-executive director. She's a professional uh, quantity surveyor by profession and she owns her own um, development organization called Asap Kiwe. Uh, they do significant property development. She also serves on several uh, other boards, including Tabio Properties uh, uh, and the Construction Industry Council. And uh, Nelsia brings a dynamic to the to the organization of excellence and um, dy dynamic um, attack of the marketplace. Uh, Nelsia also chairs the, the board committee for uh, that, that will be appointing new board members um, in the listing. As part of that process, we will uh, we've made two seats available to to the new shareholders. And I know that um, NLC and her subcommittee is is driving that process to appoint people uh, the additional two two people to the board. Um, that's in short us as an organisation. Maybe um, Marissa can uh, take us through uh, through the rest of the presentation. Uh, thank you, Antando. Thank you, France. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Marissa van Zaydam Gunene, and I'll be taking you through a presentation on the on the company. So NPC, as mentioned earlier, was founded in 2007. And over the years, we have diversified and grown. We currently have six divisions that are under the group. Um, which are Swazi Tiles Chemical Solutions, Hardware Solutions, Printing Solutions, Mixers and, and Construction Solutions. We have 180 employees um, currently employed in the group. 42% uh, of our total employee base are, are female, 75% are at board level and 75% at executive management level. Historically, we have seen the company grow at a 27% um, compounded uh, rate an average of 27% an, 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 an annum. And we have also seen the company um, grow in, in terms of its market analysis. So we currently own, NPC owns 20% of the current market in the, in the country. Hardware solutions are general hardware store owns 8%. And then chemical solutions can be divided into two sections. It's the sugar industry, which is 18%, and forestry industry, which is 80%. Of that, I will just touch on Ngonyeni Precast, chemical solutions and hardware solutions in terms of their revenue, where it comes from. NPC major revenue comes, 38% comes from individual clients, 32% comes from private corporate clients, 18% comes from retail industry and 12% comes from the construction industry. For chemical solutions, this is broken down into 60-40. 60% is sugar, food and beverage industries, and the 40% is forestry, pulp and paper. 
Hardware solutions, 63% comes from the corporate private clients and 37% comes from walk-in clients. So we currently have 32 retail stores within the country that we supply. And for us to be able to grow, we, need, we, we undertook a, an initiative on listing equity and debt bond on the Swatini Stock Exchange to raise between 150 million to 250 million Malangeni to reinvest into the business and unlock opportunities. This would then take the company from a 55.5 million revenue to 100 and in F22 to 144 million in year five. This is an average compounded growth of 21%. We will further increase employment opportunities by between 25 and 30% and additional informal employment opportunities by over a, a thousand jobs. Next slide. So we currently are based, or we are based at Ngonyeni Stvogotvo. That is where we are based. We currently supply 32 retail stores in the country. And this is where we are planning to be post listing of the bond and of equity, which is moving the company from supplying 32 stores to 67 stores in the country and an additional 22 stores outside of the country within a 200 kilometer radius from where we are. We are also ideally located in Stvogotvo with the, where the, a lot of major industrial or infrastructure projects are underway or coming up. We, are, we have the Stvogotvo Industrial Park that is coming up, the railway project, the rail project, Eswatini Railway Houses, then there's government approved projects like the Stvogotvo Police Station, Clinic and Police Accommodation. Furthermore, we're very close to the Eswatini Water Pipeline that has just been approved that will go past our property and then the Mbageni Dam, which has been awarded. So use of proceeds. When we started the process um, last year and we listed an IPO on the stock exchange on the 9th of November, the target was to issue 50 million shares at Wandi Langeni share through an IPO, which we successfully managed to get a subscription of plus minus 25 million. And this was what was presented as to what the proceeds would be used for. I will just take you through what we what the use of proceeds would be for equity. And then I will give you an update as to where we are now a month and a well, two, three months after the, the listing of the IPO. So I'm going any pre cost. The plan is to use 9.7 million Emalangeni to increase stock by 5 million which will have a positive effect on our revenue and addition and increase that by 12.5 million an annum. This is through a consignment stock model. The consignment stock model basically will then help us take the current retail stores that we supply from the 32 to the 67. This model was tested um, beginning of last year of which in the four month period, we managed to raise uh, through one retail store using the consignment stock model, one store contributed 1.1 million towards our revenue. Then we will also, by having additional stock, increase the number of Watkin clients because stock sells stock. As soon as we have all stock available, readily available on the floor, we will be able to make additional sales and not lose sales as a result of stock. We will then further put a yard over our a shelter over our yard to improve efficiencies as part of what the the plan was and then get um forklifts um to improve our efficiencies solar for um, electric forklifts to improve our efficiencies hardware solutions we mentioned that 63 percent of our revenue comes from corporate clients so we did a study in the last four months of the financial year in F23, and we realized that with specific clients, we lost four, approximately 4.5 million emalangeni worth of revenue or sales as a result of stock unavailability. So by increasing our sales or increasing our stock by 5 million emalangeni, we will then increase our revenue for the year to 24 million. We currently, have, we currently had a revenue of 1.3 million a month. This will then further give us efficiencies and we will have competitive pricing. It will improve or increase the number of walking clients that we have as again, as I mentioned, stock sell stock. We will put a shelter over our yard because with additional stock, we will need additional secure area to keep the stock to, to avoid stock losses. Swazi Tiles Investments. Swazi Tiles is the only concrete roof tile manufacturer within the country. 
we will we will increase our monthly revenue by 100,000 emalangeni a month. This is 1.2 million an annum. Again, here through the consignment stock model, we will we have identified key NPC retail clients that we will supply concrete roof tiles to, and this will then um, improve the stance of the company. Here too, you will have an increase of walk-in sales because we have, again, stock sales stock. Currently, there's a waiting list if you would like concrete roof tiles. So when we do have um, stock on the floor, uh, clients will no longer need to wait for product. Please go to the next slide. Chemical solutions. Chemical Solutions, the newest baby on the block, um, they we will increase their revenue by approximately a million a year. We will also then increase their GP by 20%. This will be done through the addition of a blending plant. Our, as I mentioned earlier, our current clients are in the forestry, sugar, food and beverage industries. And by us introducing a blending plant into the country, we will then have an improved or additional product offering within the country, and then we will supply the mining and agriculture industries. We currently have agency agreements with two South African companies to supply the industry locally. Next slide. So just to give you an update, um, post, -listing, post listing of the IPO, our group revenue exceeded f the previous year by 34%. We are still within our targeted or our projections as per pre-listing, so we have met our targets within that six months that I'm making reference to. We have increased our stock levels by 1.1 million emalangeni. The share price increased by 20% when we started or when we listed the IPO, a share was valued at one dilangeni. It is now valued at one dilangeni 20A share. NPC won a product of the year with the Ministry of Commerce Quality Awards in 2023, and Swazi Tiles was the runner-up for this. Ngonyeni Precast will then be representing Eswatini in the regional competition in Namibia this year. We have increased the number of resellers from 32 when we started this process to 41. Chemical Solutions Blending Plant is currently being installed as we speak. Uh, we have managed to reduce the cost of sale of all our products within the group, within the manufacturing sector, by an average of 7%. And Swazi Tiles has an additional 500 moles that they've added. So they have increased their daily and monthly capacity. Next slide. So I will get to what we are here for, which is the bond. So we have received approval for a 200 million bond, of which the initial uptake is for 20 million of the 80 million that we have in phase one. So if you can please just keep going, Fuzi. So of this bond, the first step is, would be to acquire a strategic raw material source. The strategic raw material source is an existing company that currently has a revenue of plus minus 2 million emalangeni a year. The plan is to increase this to 7 million by year one. How we do this is this, this plant or this raw material source company has a capacity of 4.4 million revenue a month, Emalang any revenue a month, it has a capacity of that, but should we achieve a 25% capacity of 1.1 million revenue, we'd easily get to that. NPC utilizes this specific raw material source and in the previous financial year only spent 178,000 getting it from this specific raw material source of the 1.1 million that it had spent in this. Hardware Solutions also currently supplies that to its current uh, private clients and corporate clients. So there's an additional market there. And the idea is to also utilize the consignment stock model within this to supply both HS and NPC clients. There is additional revenue of 3.2 million emalangeni for transport, which we haven't factored into any of the numbers. The second would be sand mining. We currently own, or we, we are located on the riverbed and we mine our own sand. We have licenses for two sites currently. The second site, we have a 10 year lease, which is very valued at 45 million emalangeni. This business is, has been used internally. So we'd only use it, we'd only mine the sand for internal use. So this will then be utilized as a business to generate income of about 400,000 um, 
revenue per month, which is 4.8 million revenue an annum. The transport revenue in all our plans has not been ac ac accounted for, accommodated for, and that would be an additional 200,000 emalangeni a month. Concrete batch plant, it only makes sense that as soon as you have all the aggregates and raw material on site that we go into concrete. The idea is to have a concrete batch plant that will supply our location and down south. So this would be down south of the country and east. The closest concrete batch plant is 25 kilometers away, which is in Matsapa. By doing this, we have the advantage of raw material supply. So we have the benefit of 100 emalangeni per ton on raw material. That makes us cheaper by that. And 640 emalangeni per cubic meter cheaper to supply in Gonyeni precast area and down south. New technology. So this falls in. Part of this would be done through equity and part of this would be done through the bond. The idea is to introduce, um, to make us a lot more green, reduce our carbon, carbon emissions, and to make us a lot more efficient, we will then acquire new plant. This by, so trucks to deliver our products. So by doing that, we have a saving of nine malang and 86 cents per kilometer by just going with the new technology plant compared to our existing plant. Then by having shelter over our yards, as mentioned earlier, this advantage would be obviously less stock losses uh, in terms of NPC production efficiencies because we do not we no longer stop as a result of weather. New electric forklifts, these are estimated to be 35% more efficient, so 35% cheaper than what we currently have, which is the diesel forklifts. New plant and equipment, the installation of solar, we are we are quite affected by, I think more than anything, the fuel, the electric cuts, because running off the generator is quite expensive. The blending plant, plant upgrades, and then we'll have a more in, an increased focus on environmental and social impact. So basically, what I've touched on is basically what we'd use the bond for, and by doing that, we then increase the number of divisions under NPC from six to nine. So these are the changes that we will achieve or the improvements that we'll achieve post bond, post listing. Thank you. Thank you. So that was the managing director of NPC, just giving us a brief of uh, what is uh, happening in Gonyeni and what will the funds be used for. So right now, I hope uh, Koli is on standby. We are going to, I'm tempted to take questions. Um, okay, can I open for questions? Thank you, Dando. Uh, currently, currently we've got we've got about three three questions on the chat. So the three questions on the chat, uh, three questions on the chat will be. Uh, I think the first one is from Stanley and Morris, and I can see your hand. Uh, if you can be privy to receiving the presentation via email, uh, yeah, I think we'll do that immediately after after we finish with the presentation. Thank you for for that. The second question is from uh, another uh, uh, shareholder who says, does the raw material include quarry services? Uh, it's very difficult to answer this because, but yeah, let's just say part of the raw material is, uh, is Franz, do you want to take this please? Um, yes, thank you. Um, so um, yeah, it's more than that. Uh, but amongst other, uh, other things, you know, uh, quarrying can be involved as well. But it's much more extensive than that uh, in in supplying the raw materials to to our organisation and then obviously um, externally to other suppliers. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Franz. Uh, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, the next one that we have here uh, is: Have the recent uh, have the concrete tiles withstood the recent storms? Uh, I'll hand over to the MD. Thank you for that, Wizzy. 
This one is a tricky question to respond to, um, but simply put, yes. We must understand that the recent storms that we did have, the freak storm that we did have, um, everyone dubbed as a freak storm, of all the clients that came forward to us, we had two affected clients because we sent a team out and we documented all clients, NPC clients that were affected by the storm. So we have two affected or registered clients that have complained and we have sent sales reps out to that. But we must also understand as per what the CIC released and a number, number of governing bodies that this was a freak storm. I'm not trying to justify it, but it was a freak storm. So yes, our tiles have withstood the current, the recent storms because we had two clients that were affected and we did address it with the two clients that were affected. Uh, thank you. You have, you have touched on it, Marissa. Uh, th thanks for that. Uh, I see your I see your your, your request, uh, uh, We will we'll also send to you to, to you based on what on the presentation. Kemsol, um, uh, there is a question from uh, Gosnati. Does Kemsol also do portable uh, water treatment? Yes, they do. Uh, yes, they do. Uh, that's part of the services offered by Kemsol. So. I think we are covered on that. Uh, let's keep the question coming. We'll be taking the questions as and when, uh, as and when uh, we are we we we've we've we are in the midst of another uh, on our agenda. I'll hand over to Ndando to as the program director. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was hoping uh, people were going to be asking about the bond, but it looks like. This is uh, more of a marketing uh, webinar. Okay, storms again. Can I hand over back to you, Vusi? Then I will uh, do a brief introduction of the bond. Okay, fine. I think let's allow the questions to come in so that we do not have a uh, back and forth. But right now, I am just going to take us through a brief presentation. I know someone somewhere is asking, what is the bond we are talking about? So let's just uh, quickly, can you just quickly go through this very brief slide? So as mentioned uh, previously, Firstly, uh, NPC listed equity, which is shareholding. So now they've listed a bond. So in shareholding, it, you become an, uh, an owner or a co-owner of that company. Then you get your return uh, in the form of dividends or capital gains should you decide to sell your stake. Right. So with the bond, it's slightly different. Uh, I would simplify it by saying that you are actually practically loaning the company. So you're giving the money to the company for them to use at an exchange for interest, which is called coupons. So in simpler terms, uh, bonds are simply fixed income debt instruments, whereby uh, an investor will receive their returns in the form of regular interest coupon payments. So how does this work? So what happens basically for this bond, as mentioned, and on, you can also check uh, the pricing supplement to know the details of the bond. The tenure or the duration of the bond is 10 years. Then maturity effectively becomes at... 30 March 2034, apologies for that, it's 2034. So the coupon rate, so the interest which the investor will be getting is uh, the prime rate plus 1.5%, which then effectively brings us to 12.5% currently in the market. So you get your interest payments uh, semi-annually. So I've just tried to create a spreadsheet that will show you how the interest will be received in the 10 year period. So let's look at the instance of, let's just take 50,000. 
if you look at the 50,000, so if you invest 50,000, uh, also it's worth noting that uh, we have uh, we have a minimum uh, investment uh, amount, which is 5,000. Hence, I started at 5,000. So if you had invested 50,000, so your 12.5% will be calculated on the 50,000. But since it's paid semi-annually, it will then be divided to, to two so that it is paid in September and in March each and every year. So 30 March, 30 September, that's where the payment is made. So the interest schedule looks like this for the duration of the 10 years. And when we look at the last payment, which is 30 March 2034, when you look at the last payment, had you invested 50,000, your last payment will be 50,000 plus the coupon or the interest that is supposed to be paid for that period. So basically, you put in 50,000 and you get these uh, interest payments monthly for the next, uh, not monthly, semi-annually or in six-month intervals for the next 10 years. Then on the 10th year, you receive back your 50,000 and then also the interest for that period. I think it is clear on that end. This is basically how bonds operate. So I hope now we will have questions uh, in relation to the most important thing that has brought us here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ntando. Uh, the first question, uh, okay, uh, before I get to the question on the chat, uh, I have uh, two hands. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask them to unmute on their side in succession. Firstly, I'll start with you, Trevor. Trevor, are you able to talk? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Uh, Hello? Hello? Hi, Trevor. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Oh, okay, thanks, thanks. Um, thank you for, for, for explaining what the, what the point is. Um, I'm, I'm one risk averse uh, 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 individual. I, I just want to check here because I'm really concerned about uh, the state of, of the economy, uh, not only the country, but uh, the world over. So what guarantee do I have in terms of my capital being protected and also the income that I derive from the, the bond as a bond hold? Because that's, that's where my worry is. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, we'll come back to you, Bonga Gile. Um, hi, uh, thank you so much for having this presentation for us. Um, I had invested in the IPO, so I'm looking forward to this as well. My question is regarding the redemption and regarding uh, the the closing date of the bond one within the 10 years uh, is one allowed to redeem any of your funds or all of your funds to um the when is the closing date of when one can buy the bond and sorry three is the bond taxable uh, 
Bang again, like, can you repeat the second part of your question, please? Okay, I had, I think someone is muted. Um, okay, my first question was that, can you redeem part or all of your funds within the 10 years? My second question was, when does the when is the deadline to buy the bond? And my third question was, is the bond taxable? Like, can SRA take from your payments and from your interest that you get? Not at Pongagila. We'll get to answer you. With, uh, Stanley and Morris. Uh, hi. Yeah, Hello. continue. All right. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, my question. I think I typed the question, but uh, yeah, I wanted to find out from NPC what are uh, their risks, uh, how, they, how will they hedge against the risk or the investment risk, seeing that these storms are a recurring uh, event. And uh, also, I see that um, from the estimate of the 50,000 that we only, the bond only has a coupon rate and not a, a dividend yield. So over the 10 years, there isn't a, a principal. Well, there isn't an, a, an eventual interest on the principal. It's said to be an income instrument. Thanks, sir. Uh... I think we'll we'll also answer that one. Okay, let me start with the ones on the chat. Uh, if you can bear with me. Yeah. France, can you answer the question asked by Stanley and Morris? It's also been typed on the chat seeing that these storms are a recurring caveat water insurance measure, will NPC have in place to hedge against investment risk? Franz? Okay, um, great. Uh, thanks, Vusi. I'll, I'll try just to give some context. Uh, Swazital's investment accounts for revenue of the group. Uh, so it is, um, it is a small portion of the business. Uh, on top of that, <clears throat> we are SWASA, SWASA certified, Swazi Tiles as an organization. And last year, in the, <clears throat> in the country nationwide quality um, awards uh, uh, run by uh, the Ministry of uh, Trade and Commerce, uh, NPC won first prize and uh, Swazi Tiles came second, won the second prize. So quality is, is a priority to us. Um, and, and we have you know, and we can provide proof of that, and we get externally audited, and we enter competitions like this to show that we, comp uh, you know, compete with the best in the world. But having said that, <clears throat> um, we do not have a concern about um, our tiles being um, at risk because of um, adverse weather conditions. For a start, when you have a, <coughs> a freak storm event like this, um, so, um, NPC and Swazi Tiles have been manufacturing roof tiles for more than 10 years. In that time, we've sold more than 7 million tiles um, in Eswatini that are uh, in operation on roofs, on buildings across the nation. And with all uh, the storms over the last 10 years, and this was not the first freak storm, we have lost a total of about 6,000 tiles um, that was damaged uh, of the tiles from our um, that comes out of our factory. What one must understand, there were more tiles damaged, but they weren't supplied by us, they weren't manufactured by us. Uh, so uh, we in investigate each and every instance. So if you do the calculation, we're talking less than 0.008% um, of tiles that we've manufactured that were actually damaged by this freak storm. So even though this storm was classified by everybody that it is exceptional and out of the ordinary, um, um, it, it only affected a very, very small portion of um, our tiles. So our concern is not the fact that these storms will be more and more. 
Um, our concern is that we have to ensure that we stick to the quality that we produce. We have to ensure that we stay with the quality that we produce and that we police that really vigorously through SWASA um, uh, accreditation and certification, but also through international benchmarking. Um, um, so one must understand 6,000 tiles um, is 60,000 Emelangeni. Uh, 7 million tiles is 70 million Emelangeni. So to us, um, if you put that on our risk schedule, it would be one of our lowest risks. Um, but I, I mean, it's an important question to ask. Um, we make them strong and we will make sure that we keep on making them strong and that we keep that risk managed. Um, that's what we do. I hope that answers that question. I saw some other questions about the, the bond. Uh, obviously, uh, if you receive interest on the bond, uh, if you invest in the bond, your interest will be taxable income in your hands uh, for you to manage. Uh, um, I don't know. Thanks, Franz. Uh, I think we'll take it from there and can continue. He is frozen. Uh, I see. I see your hand, Stanley. I'll get back to you in a moment. Please. Okay. Uh, Franz, you. Thanks. Yeah, can okay. Bongadilla, you, you ask if you uh, if we're able to reach our target from the IPO. Uh, I think Marisa touched on this that during the IPO we. We all we were able to raise uh, about 25 million, which is 50% of the what we had on the IPO. The other 50% is what is currently floated on the stock exchange, which means anyone that wants shares can go to the stock exchange through a broker and actually purchase. But please note that it won't be at the one rent, but it will now be at whatsoever price you are going to make uh, based on the ruling price of 120 at the mo at the moment. Uh, thanks, Ndombi. I or oh, Prudence Gwembu. I see your question. Uh, or we will send to you. What's the maximum amount of bonds for which one can purchase? Uh, I think currently uh, the maximum amount is. Uh, uh, 80.4 million. So it's 80.4 million. If you can just put, write that check for 80.4 million, I'd be really grateful. Uh, and yeah, uh, note that currently we do have uh, 20 that will be floated, 20 million, but the the whole of 80 million is 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 up for sale. Is shielding still open? Yes, shielding is is still open. Um, and then. I, uh, please, uh, what is the outlook if I invest the entry amount? I, I responded to that, that Dando in his presentation put the 5,000, which is the minimum amount you can you can buy the bond for. Uh, how is the interest tax, 33%? No, 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 it's not 33%. It's a final withholding tax of, of 10% for individuals and for companies. To companies are not taxed. Instead, the interest it, it goes to be part of their their taxable income. But with the current current legislation, uh, for companies, uh, interest on several bonds is is, is not taxed. It it forms part of your taxable income. When will the bond close? Uh, I will try to. Uh, Dando will answer that one. But looking at the numbers in front of me or the dates in front of me is the fifth of April, 2024. Uh, that is in in about two weeks' time, 5th of April 2024. Uh, can I also increase my bond purchase at any given time during the course of 10 years? If the bond is available, yes, you can do whatsoever you want. You can sell, you can buy, you can do everything, but not that this will have to go through a broker and not through NPC. And then what are the, are the returns fixed? What happens in the event that the company doesn't do well? Does the interest of the bond have a chance on increasing? Uh, uh, the returns, it's they are not fixed. They are related to prime. They are varying. So it's prime plus 1.5 percent. Prime is currently sitting at 11 percent, and the bond is going at 12.5 percent. We have done a major comparison, especially with uh, the government bonds. A 10-year government bond will give you around 10.5 to 11 percent, and this is giving you 1.5 or, or 2 percent above the government bond, depending on how you look at it. 
So what happens in the event that the company doesn't do well? Unfortunately, the obligations for a bond are mandatory. You cannot decide that you haven't done well, so you cannot pay. Those have to be paid no matter what. It's part of the rules of the game. You, there is no other way that you can you can work around it. Does the interest of the bonds have the chance of increasing? I really, really hope not, because for that bond to actually increase, it will actually mean that prime needs to increase. So if prime increase, the bond will also the bond rate or the coupon rate will also increase because it's it's, it's actually linked to the bond. Uh, I think the other question from Aaron, the interest due from the bond taxable, I think I've answered that individuals, yes, companies, no, depending on the nature of the company. Um, and there's a question from Spongele. I bought shares last time and uh, had people have got certificate but never got any communication from yourselves. From that side, or oh, it didn't happen. I forgot his name. Yeah, his name is Dando here. He will get back to you, Spongele. Uh, if you can write on the chat your email address so that he gets back to you, please, uh, Spongele, write your, your email address on the chat and we'll get back to you. Will access to the point be through a broker? Currently, with the, with the current Part, no, you can come to either us as the transfer secretaries or you can go directly to NPC or you can go to the broker. So for now, you can go to any of those three. So if the prime decreases, the interest will decrease as well. Yes, yes, yes. Remember, it's linked to prime. So if prime decreases, it means that also inflation has decreased at that particular point in time. Hence, also the rate, the coupon rate, is, since it's linked to that, will decrease. Uh, the coupon rate is currently attractive over a short period of time, but 10 months, it's not worth it. Can one invest on a year to three years? Can you go? We have looked at this question with the tenor. We have said that even though the tenor is 10 years, we are willing to, the company is actually willing to take tenors that are about five years, but that also depends on the ticket size and also on the discussions uh, with, with, with the client. So, uh, SGX, you can you can come and, and we can talk. Thank you, Spongile, for that email address. And I think I'll hand over to my sidekick here who will answer some of the other questions that were asked, especially by Bongegile and Trevor. Thank you, thank you. So to start off with uh, Mr. Trevor's question, he's asked about the capital protection on the principal and the interest payments. So Basically, the process of listing on the stock exchange gives the, uh, the investor confidence because this is a market that is regulated and the company is expected to not only deliver but also be transparent on their, expect uh, their proposed, uh, based, based on what they have proposed. So it means all the funds have to be reported and also the company performance is reported on the stock exchange. So the high transparency actually gives some sort of comfort to the investor with regards to the repayments, as well as the fact that uh, I think it was mentioned on the presentation that the company will set up a sinking fund, which will basically save towards the principal repayment of the bond. I think that one has been covered. Then uh, first question from Bongagile was, can you redeem the funds before maturity? Uh, unfortunately, not from NPC, but this is a tradable uh, bond. So should you want to redeem, you would have to sell in the market based on availability. If someone wants to take on the bond, the bond will be able to trade on the secondary market. So not NPC, but you have to engage your broker to find if you can uh, find a buyer. So can one redeem the funds before maturity? The answer is no. Then the closing date for application is the 5th of April, 2024. But I would advise that should you have uh, interest outside of the deadline, we will have to, you'll have to engage us, then we'll negotiate because as mentioned, currently 20 million is floated out of the 80.4 million. So if you feel like you really need to invest, but your funds are, are not readily available by the 5th of April, please engage us before the 5th of April so that we can see if any arrangement can be made as mentioned. 
So the bond taxable, the withholding tax um, tax of 10% on individuals has been uh, mentioned. I think I've covered all. Thank you. Thank you, Ndando. Uh, I really appreciate you trying to answer the question. I think it's time we move on to the next uh, part of the agenda. Uh, since since Kolile, uh, can you please take over? I see your hand, uh, Stanley and Maurice. We'll get back to you after Kolile's uh, very, very brief presentation. Kolile, are you are you winning? Thank you, Chef. And may I please confirm if you are able to see my presentation? Please, please maximize your your your, your slide. Thank you, Chair. Can you see my presentation now? Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. My name is Dolile Masugu from SNG Grand Thornton. So I'll be sharing on how to invest in NPC medium term notes. I'll also take on the required documents as well as the important dates. The first slide we will talk on the required documents for individuals or slash natural, natural persons. The first one will need your certified ID copy, which should be printed both sides. Number two, your proof of residential address. We should bear the investor name, and if not, an affidavit along with proof suffices. Uh, oh, Lily, your, your network is, is cutting. Right. Can you start from the beginning? All right. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible now? Loud and clear. Loud and clear. All right, thank you. So um, my name is Tony Masugo again. I'm going to take on, on how to invest in the medium term notes, the required documents, as well as important documents. The next slide, we will take on the required documents from individuals. Number one, you will need your certified ID copy, which should be printed both sites. Number two, your proof of residential address, we should bear the investor name, and if not, an affidavit along with proof suffices. Number three would be your proof of source of income. So you can attach your pay slip or affidavit, etc. Number four, your bank confirmation letter or bank statement. Number five, your proof of payment. And this funds should be deposited to NPC trust accounts. This account has been shared on the bond application form. Number six, your completed and signed bond application form. Please note all these documents should be submitted within three months of certification. Then we take on the required documents for legal entities. Number one, we need your certificate of registration or any equivalent document. Number two, the proof of residential address of the entity. Your form J and form C or equivalent your board resolution or partnership agreement, depending on the type of legal entity this is. Then your bank confirmation letter or bank statement. Then the director's IDs and proof of residential addresses. Your proof of payment, as well as your completed and signed bond application form. 
Then the required documents for trust funds, we need your trust deed number, the details of trustees, the banking details, proof of payment, and the completed bond application form. All of these documents should be submitted within three months of certification. Then the last part would be the submission of documents. So before you submit the documents, please make sure you have the bond application form. It should be signed and initialed all the pages. The minimum subscription amount that Ntando mentioned, which is at 5,000 in Malangani. Your KYC documents, your proof of payment. So when you are making the payment, you are urged to use a unique identifier as a reference. That could be your, if you're a natural person, it could be your ID number or your company registration number. Then you send all of these documents to transfer secretary at sng.gt.com. Or if you prefer, you can hand deliver this to SNG Grand Thornton offices. And we, want, we would like to, re, to, to assure you that all emails will be acknowledged. And the last part are the important Thank you. dates. Okay, it's just a, a wrap up of the important dates. The opening of the issue was done on the 19th of February, 2024. Then the issue will be allocated on the 5th of April. Then the bond certificates will be dispatched by the 16th of April, 2024. And the trading of these notes on the ESE will be done or will, will begin on the 17th of April. Thank you. That's all for my end. Thank you, Kolile. Uh, I'll just ask if there are any questions based on what Kolile has presented and what we, uh, we Dando, has actually, has actually lo looked at. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Stanley and Morris, uh, your hand was up at one point in time. Uh, do you, are you still, is your hand still up? Uh, Yes, yes, Lucy, thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to emphatically point out um, the question on, on the dividend yields along with the coupon rates. I know the coupon rate is by annual, but uh, I know at the maturation of, of, the, of the bond, there should be a dividend yield if it's an interest-bearing investment. And then also, second question, could you expand um, edify us a bit more capital gains tax? What exactly is, what, what exactly is, is, is taxable? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure uh, about dividend yield on a bond because a bond pays interest. So otherwise to cover the aspect of a uh, Bond yield. It's basically for a fixed income security that is a <clears throat> floating rate. It is quite difficult to calculate the yield because a yield, the bond yield, is calculated at a specific time, especially with the price of the bond available. So currently, the bond is already issued at par. So which means the price is already the 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 the, the par value. So it will be difficult to project on the dividend, uh, the bond yield at this point because currently the bond uh, yield is equals to the coupon interest payments over the duration of the year. I'm not sure if that answers your question. And the second question was with regards to uh the the tax the tax on the interest okay i'll i'll go back on the tax on the interest so effectively for individuals they still the withholding tax which 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 ends up being a final tax so you are not taxed at 33 percent but rather you are taxed at at, at 10 percent uh, as per the withholding tax rules if you are a, a swatini resident and 15 percent if you are a a, a south african uh, uh, individual but companies when it comes to companies companies are not really taxed on that and they will 
they, they deal with the tax when it comes to their eventual uh, taxable income or when they put in the return there. I see a hand from Eunice Candy. Uh, Eunice Candy, can you ask your question? Thank you very much, Nicholson. All I am interested in is uh, on the issue of trust deed number. And now, where do you get it from? Uh, we are asked to have that, but then where do you get it from? When you go to the person. Thank you, Eunice. Uh, I think let, let, let me first project and see if I get I got your answer. We are asking about when in the case of trust, where do you get the trust deed number? So in, in, in the SYTN context, uh, uh, trust, we have got a lot of trust, but most of the trust are not registered, which means we would say by law, they are not, re, they are not, uh, I, I am not a lawyer here, but you know, based on best practice, by law, they are not uh, uh, recognized as trust because you they are not registered with the with with with, with registrar. Uh, so I I will just ask that do go and register your trust so that it become re re registered and recognized. And then once you register, you will then get the trust deed number. That, that's when it's provided. It will be provided on the document that you will get from from the from from the registrar uh, from the registrar of of of, of, of companies and trusts. So you you go do that, and sometimes you find would say you have to register it either with the court or with with. Uh, but I do have a lawyer here who who can who can answer this question from a legal perspective. But it's an issue of legality. It's an issue of legality of this. Pilile, please do come here and and, and assist me. Thank you. Eunice Candy, thank you for the question. Uh, with trust, uh, trust can be registered with lawyers and also with consultants. So they're registered by the deeds office here in Baban. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, my legal eagle friend. Uh, so I think we've, I don't see, I don't see any more questions on, on the, on the chat and I also don't see any hands. I'll, Okay, I see a question on the chat. Uh, I'll give to Ndando. Okay, thank you. Uh, the question is, uh, when does the first payment of the interest kick in? Is it within the six months? Yeah, that will be September. For this specific one, that, um, uh, that actually will be listed on the 5th of April. So yeah, I think that's the last question we have. All right, I think we have covered uh, everything for today. Uh, anything else can be communicated with uh, me through emails. Uh, I sent the invitation, so thank you so much for coming and joining. And I would like to share with you guys the investor hotline cell number in case you want to inquire about to how to buy shares or anything related to Ngonyeni investors, it will be 7802-5062. So if you call this number, you will get all the assistance with regards to investments. So let me just say it again, 7802-5062. Six two. That's your investor hotline for Ngonyani Precast. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And we will be, we hope we will be communicating further on emails and also on the bank account provided. The forms have been distributed on the email. So we will wait your responses on the bank account. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Um, Bendulo, uh, it's the 5th of April, Bendulo, 5th of April. Thank you.